Hello, let's talk about polyprotic and polybasic materials. Um, these refer to chemicals rather than solutions. Um, there are two that you simply have to be familiar with. These are H3PO4 and H2CO3. Um, these are phosphoric acid and carbonic acid. These are both uh, critical to every science major we have and kinesiology. Phosphate is the dominant buffer in biological solutions, and carbonic acid um, constitutes the buffer in water for ocean science for the most part, um, and is key to physical, to, well, to physiology as well. So this says write equilibria and look up pKa's for H3PO4. Um, we'll make some space and do that below. But what you need to be able to do is identify monoprotic, protic here refers to a proton, diprotic or triprotic, and then monobasic or dibasic. These refer to how many protons a molecule could give up if it's an acid, or how many protons it could take up if it's a base. What do you think H3PO4 is? That's right, this is triprotic. That means we can write three equilibria, and write three pKa's, or Ka's, right? Because every equilibrium will have a K, an equilibrium constant. And if I took the negative log, I'd have a pKa. All right, let's make some space and do that. When I dissolve H3PO4 in water, what happens? This is a generic, you can use the generic acid equation, but you'll find that you make H3O plus, and you lose a proton. And this will have a Ka, and thus a pKa. Um, I can do that again. So I can start with H2PO4 minus, so here that's one of the products of the former reaction, but we said this was triprotic. This still has two more protons it could give. So what if, the, what if that happened? What if that's sitting around in water and it reacts to donate a proton? What would it do? Well, same, same deal, H3O plus, and then A minus, which is whatever I started with, with one fewer proton and one more negative charge. Let's do pKa1. PKA2, and you guessed it, PKA3. So let's start that again. Let's take our product and lose another proton. Oops, that should be aqueous. Um, this is aqueous, and that will react with water. To, again, give H3O plus. and A minus, which is PO4, 3 minus, and that will have a pKa as well. Um, how am I going to look up these pKa's? What you want to do in each of these is look up the, the most acidic molecule, and then whatever you find, an article or a reference will typically list all, all the pKa's for that molecule. In this case, it will list pKa1, pKa2, and pKa3. Um, in order of acidity, let's do Wikipedia... Phosphoric acid. There's my autocomplete. Okay. Phosphoric acid wiki. Okay, blah blah blah. Information. Um, somewhere on the right here in these tables of data over here. A um, lot of information. If I scroll down, um, often there'll be an acidity section. Stop me if you see it. Get it? You can't do that because you're watching on YouTube. Alright. Somewhere in here. You should be able to find the PKAs. Oh, here. Right in the middle of the screen. Okay. Um, acidic properties. Dissociation constant PKA. This is technically a negative log, but we got 2.14, 7.20, and 12.37. So let's get those. 2.14 to 7.20. And 
If your molecule is tripodic, it should have three PKAs. If it's tribasic, it should have three PKBs. Um, each of these molecules, you could do that analysis on. So this is tripodic. Aspartic acid. Um, what about H2PO for a moment? That would be dipodic. And likewise, HPO4 2 minus would be monoclonic. And you can do it over here with these trees uh, as the bases. This is monobasic because it could only take on one proton. Dibasic because it could take on two. Dibasic because it could take on two. Um, I've only ever seen this for multiple PKAs. I guess you could have multiple PKBs. Um, most people would do the PKAs and then if they needed to do the conversion from the squares of knowledge. Um, but let's look at a couple more. Let's look at carbonate. Let me see. Acid or base? Well, I don't think it can be a bronsted acid because I don't see any protons, so it must be a bronsted base. That looks like that could take on protons. Um, how many? I don't even know how to ask this question. Is it monobasic, dibasic, tribasic? How many protons could that take on? Well, if I added two protons, that would be H2CO3, so I'm going to say it's dibasic. Um, that means how many PKAs should I expect to see? So, thank you for writing. Look for two PKAs. Um, when you start titrating, you will find two PKAs in your curve and two squiggles when you do that. So you'll find a PKA1 for H2CO3. This one is the fully protonated acid. And you'll find a PKA2 or bicarbonate. Let's do another example here. Let's do calcium hydroxide. Acid or base? Okay, acid base. It's got hydroxide in it. Um, monobasic or dibasic? And wait a second here. Before you think about how many protons this could take, ask yourself, what is the base? What is the molecule that will actually take the proton? Is it calcium hydroxide? It's not. It's actually hydroxide. Hydroxide is the base. Calcium hydroxide is formulated in such a way that it has two of them. But hydroxide is the base, and how many protons could hydroxide take? It's actually monobasic. So this is a strong base, and I am unaware of any strong acids or bases that have polyprotic and polybasic character. Um, I only know of strong that where it's a single one that donates. Um, in this case, there are two of them, so you need to be careful with stoichiometry if you're working with this. To find out, you make sure you have the right moles of hydroxide. But you only expect one PKA, or in the case it's strong, so you don't expect anything. Um, but in each of these, you should ask yourself, what is the chemical that will actually act as an acid or actually act as a base? And then you can do your analysis from there. Okay, I think that's it for polyprotic, polybasic. Um, as I said, this stuff is big in environmental science. Um, certainly for marine, you're going to do carbonate equilibria um, and any health sciences or environmental work in general. Um, you're going to need to think about the buffers in your water systems. Um, and the buffers are all made up of these polyprotic and polybasic materials. So I think that's it for this video, um, check back in soon and we'll get to Lewis Acids and Bases.